Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this next episode of European of Asalis 4. We are playing the preview to Emperor, and I am playing as Lubeck. And as a reminder, I am going to be playing this on twitch.tv slash Mordred Viking this evening at 6pm BST. That is going to be a big multiplayer game with the other creators. And it's just occurred to me that if you are watching this after the Saturday and the Sunday, the 6th and 7th of June, when we're going to be streaming that live, don't worry, that is going to be something which I will be uploading here onto the channel in the next few days. So just keep an eye out for the big multiplayer. That's going to be cut up and uploaded like I do with many other series. But I would highly recommend and highly urge you to come watch it live. It is just a much better experience. If you have the opportunity this evening, 6th of June at 6pm BST, then come join us. You'll be more than welcome. Uh, there are a lot of people taking part, and that's going to be me playing as Holland. But right now, we are playing as Lubeck. We have sorted out our alliances, and I am... Whoops, that's not alliance. Really quite happy with the friends that we've got. So we've got Denmark, we've got Brandenburg, Deathsmartian, and then we also have our trade league, which includes Hamburg, Bremen, Unholt, Goslar, Nassau, Deathsmartian, and Riga. So really quite a mighty collection of nations. Yes, we have a lot of single province miners in our or on our side. However, the OPMs do actually have more money than they should do um, because there's basically a boost on a per nation basis, which means they have more money and also more manpower and more force limits. So a collection of OPMs is actually stronger than the same number of provinces in a single nation. So, opium's all the way, and trade leagues are the way to handle that kind of swarm. In the meantime, though, I am kind of waiting for Denmark to enter into a war against Sweden. I'm expecting the Swedes to try and get independence at some point. They are up to 48%, 47, 46. Uh, probably because rebels are being fought. And maybe also relations are being improved. Speaking of relations... We can get up to 100 relations bonus with Austria. We're currently at 64. So we can continue doing that a little bit further. And that should be golden. When is our election? Our election's the 11th of November. So, oh no, we've got over a year. That's alright. That's alright. Ships are still doing their thing. We don't need anything on mothballed. We're making more and more money. Uh, what I'm doing at the moment is waiting for us to get enough points to upgrade technologies. And then once we're ahead of time in technology, then we can start to really double down in terms of uh, development. However, it has occurred to me that I could probably be protecting trade in order to increase the amount of trade power that we have here, which will likely increase our income even further. So we're currently collecting 0 0.56 with a trade of 4.1. We're now getting 0 0.66 with a 4.3. So yes, that is earning us more cash. Marvelous! Now, how often can I change those edicts? That's another question I do have. Because if it's every 10 years, I might regret that slightly. Although, when's the next technology due? 51. It's currently 47, so that's in four years' time. I don't think it's 10 years, though. How often is it? I was expecting to be able to hover over, and it would tell me. But it's not. Uh, how long until I can change this again? Hmm. Alright, well that's one tooltip that seems to be missing. Aragon tells us of the Neapolitan succession whereupon the possible options they went with we shall follow Alfonso's last testament. Naples will become independent, ruled by the son of Alfonso V. So Aragon has just lost control of Naples and Naples has naturally goddess independence that must be a new event which aragon has access to and there should be a bunch of new events and other flavor full stuff uh, added to the game um that obviously being one burgundian inheritance has like an entire chain associated with it that's part of the imperial incidents and there is generally just going to be a lot more stuff going on speaking of which how is oh regency for charles the first Charles the Bold is already dead. I'm surprised that Burgundian inheritance didn't already happen, although I guess it's because... 
Alf, no. Um, who's the heir? Charles de Bourgogne. Yeah, he got an heir just before he died, I guess. Oh, we got lucky. Oh, no, he's 14. That's not lucky. He's been around for a while. Maybe that is Charles the Bold. Was Isabella first? Okay, I'll be honest, I have no idea. Surrender of Maine. Time to teach them how to war. So the Hundred Years' War has flared up again. We have got England versus France. Let's take a quick look at who has decided to get involved. So on the French side, we have the French and all of the miners. Uh, Burgundy so far sitting out of this. Sometimes Burgundy can be a bit of a kingmaker. But it looks like France with Provence. Armagnac, Auvergne, Orléans. And Foix versus England. Now, England has one advantage in that it's a United State, whereas France has all of the subdivisions through the powerful duchies under their control. I mean, they are all part of the vassal swarm, and because of the way that independent states work, they will have more troops uh, because of that. But they will lose, or they will lack that central uh, command and control. And if any of those uh, dukes get upset with France, then they'll start ignoring their orders, and their troops will basically sit at home sulking. Trade crisis. Our merchants report that they are facing stiffening resistance to trying to peddle their wares. They're talking like it's the end of the world and fear that it will never return a copper again in life. So it's just the merchants. We can have a severe trade crisis or we can pay 25 diplomatic power to make it into a minor trade crisis. And I think I'd rather take the minor one as that only just lasts... Actually, both of them only last a year. 25 diplo for a year's worth of 15% trade. We're making money at the moment, so you know what? We'll take the severe trade crisis. It's only a year. So 0.76 income becomes... 0.3. It's okay. Still making cash. Mamelukes have declared war upon Venice. Diplomatic insult. Well, they're not going to get much out of that. And here we go. Our first election. The term is up for Fabian Schmidt. With enough support, he can stay in office, but then he must defeat his three primary competitors. So we can keep him. He will gain an additional uh, point in every single category. So he'll become a 544, which is very good. He is still pretty young. He's like 36, 37. Or we can grab a bureaucrat, a, a diplomat, or a military. But I think keeping Fabian Schmidt is just fine. We have enough Republican tradition. The lower Republican tradition goes, the higher stability costs go, and the more revolt risk you get. Or rather, the revolt risk reduction is reduced. And if you go below, I cannot remember what the danger zones are. It's like 70 and 30 or something like that, that you can become a dictatorship. I think going below 50 is definitely a bad idea. I feel like that might be something that I need to look up. So let's do that real quick. Oh mighty Google! Bestow upon me your wisdom about Republican tradition, please. And sorry about the weird flickering screen that happens whenever I alt-tab. At least it's not like... Like we've had before. So, dictatorship. I wish to know about dictatorship. I'm guessing is under the question of dictatorship. If the ruler dies in office, similar event occurs. Do, 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 do. Uh, that's not what I wanted to know. Re-electing a ruler with less than 20 Republican tradition, a non-tribal republic will turn into a dictatorship. So the magical number is 20. However, negative events happen at 40. So when you hit 40, it's very likely that you will just collapse down to the 20. So do not go below 40. Ever! Naval research is wrong. It seems as if a leading shipwright in our country has written a very convincing document detailing how the new ship technology that his rival has been trying to get funding for will never work. It may even cause the ships to sink before they ever leave harbour. So we can lose prestige, which is bad. We don't want to go negative, or we can lose diplo power. We've got to lose the diplo. Foreign plots? Wild rumours are circulating about our nobility plotting with foreign powers. Hysteria grows and the mood is fearful. The people demand that we strike at the traitors, but wiser minds say we must let the tradition of the Republican justice take its course. So we can seize them and their wealth, which will lose 10 Republican tradition, so we go down to 77, and we gain some money, or we lose a stability. 
And stability right now should be relatively cheap. Let's just take a quick look. It would cost us 128. So this is basically 128 admin. Or the 10 Republican tradition. I know it's possible to work out how many points that could potentially lose, but I can't be bothered right now. I think... I'm trying to keep my tradition high. We have a young leader, which means we want to keep on re-electing him. I will take that, and then I'll boost it up again straight away. Uh, Austria is now fully done, so we have the best possible relations with the Austrians. So now what I think I'm going to do is set one of my guys to improving relations automatically with allies. The Emperor has enacted an imperial reform. Syndic, with the backing of the members of the Holy Roman Empire, the Emperor has decided to go through with the reform of Call for the Reich's reform. This reform has the following effect. Reform the Empire to a more centralised model. The Empire provinces gain 5% cheaper construction, 5% cheaper development, and gives a CB on non-members holding imperial territory. Now, I believe it is actually slightly easier to add territory to the Empire now. So if we go to the Imperial map mode, I just want to see if it has actually expanded. Like the Pope's joined the Empire. I'm fairly sure the Pope does not begin in the Empire. Uh, Ragusa is in. I don't remember Ragusa being a member of the Empire. Pope already was. Bohemia most certainly was. Austria was. Silly probably was. Um, Holland was. Brabant. Burgundy. Parts of Burgundy. Burgundy proper isn't because their capital isn't. Good to know that Holland is, though. I need to remember that. Fairly sure they start in the Empire, and they leave when they form the Netherlands. I think that's how it works. Uh, how is the force limit doing? We are still at 7 out of 7. Not surprising. Development hasn't changed. Come on, Sweden. 54% liberty desire. They just need to find some people who want to help them get independence. And that could happen. This will just be a question as to whether Denmark has more troops or not. keep looking over there like there's going to be a chat there is no chat this isn't live it's been such a long time since i pre-recorded something actually no it's not the last thing i pre-recorded was troy which by the way if you have not had a chance yet to check out the total war troy uh pre-release battles which i got so creative assembly gave exclusive access to just the battles between hector and achilles to a group of their trusted partners um you can find those on the channel uh just look for total war troy and there should be two videos, one with Hector, one with Achilles. And I would highly urge you to check them out, they're cool. Right, Mulhouse. We have improved relations with you maximum. Did we actually get Mulhouse into... The Trade League? No. We can. We should. We did! And are there any other Trade Leagues close to wanting to join us? Or any other na uh, nations who want to join us. No. So it's going to be a real problem trying to convince anybody else. August, Brandenburg, Denmark, who would love to, but they're too big. So the only ones which are available are these guys. Ansbach would be the next one. Way down there. 36. And it's in the Venice trade node. I mean, Venice does feed into Rhineland. Sorry, not Venice. Austria. The Vienna node. Strasbourg is over there. Rotherburg. Uh, where's Afali? Where is this? I'm feeling it's like Ireland. Or it is Ireland. Tyrconnell, Leinster. So the Irish ones aren't really going to do much for us. Actually, North Sea feeds into Lubeck. They could. But that would almost certainly draw me into war against England, which I don't think I can afford. So I think I'll pass on that one. Though we could definitely slow England's um, expansion down if we did that. Which does have its own benefits. Alright, December 49, so we are once again earning money. The severe trade crisis is over. We handled the recession beautifully. Okay, so we can upgrade military technology to the Pike Square. And I think I'm actually going to wait until somebody else gets ahead of time so that I get the 5% cheaper. Because then I can invest some development into manpower. Also, I am wondering... Bloomberg and Verdun. 
<laughs> they are literally allied with each other. How many troops are these two going to have? Probably more than 7,000 combined. Country. Rivals. Troops. Uh, total. So I have 7,000. They have 8,000. So they do slightly outnumber me. However, I have cavalry. They do not. Oh man, it would be such a close fight. I don't think I have any modifiers for combat, except I do have the morale of armies. Uh, Sachs Lohenberg. Let me just see what their, like, starting thing is. So Sachs Lohenberg's stability and siege ability. Lundberg's land maintenance, cost of war exhaustion. Missionary and national tax. Like, none of them have any military bonuses. This is really tempting. This is a terrible idea, but it's really tempting. Especially if I go with the military attack. Oh, I would get the two innovativeness if I get it now, because I'm ahead of time. I'm not going to be the first, am I? No. I think you get more than two if you're first. Nope, I would be the first in the world. Well, in that case, I'm going to take the innovativeness. Okay, throughout the Middle Ages, cavalry's dominance was being challenged by disciplined pikemen. In battles such as Bannockburn or the Golden Spurs, cavalry was defeated by pikes. A combination of improved training and discipline and the addition of swordsmen to provide close combat support has raised the formation to its peak efficiency. I might see how battle goes. They don't have a general. And we could also get a reform. Is this reform going to be m morale? No, but we can get yearly Republican tradition, which is almost certainly what we'll do. So, authoritarianism reduces unrest, which doesn't really help us. We're going to be very small anyway. Can re-elect from ruling family, so this one is nepotism basically, and a random candidate will gain plus one, which can be that candidate, like the one that you're trying to re-elect, I think, pretty sure. Or we can go for the yearly Republican tradition. Oh no, random candidate. That's all candidates gain plus one. So the new candidates would be basically a 4-1-2 or a 5-2-1 or a 5-1-1 one, one or something like that. Um, so it can be good because that's that extra point. But I just like being able to re-elect people. And getting republicanism means that you can re-elect people more often. I'm going to raise maintenance and I think I'm going to prepare for a war. I'm not going to have a huge amount of money to do this, but there's always loans. And the intention here is going to be vassals. I want to take some vassals. I don't think I'm going to wake up my navy because we would definitely lose at sea. In fact, we would probably have to dock the light ships. We have a fort, 7,000. They have no fort, no fort, no fort. Interesting. All right, so if, can I go to Holstein? No, but they would almost certainly give me military access. Then I can sit in Holstein and attack there, and they could attack into the fort. Which I would be okay with. Because that would lose their manpower. So I would much like to just attack into there as quickly as possible. But that gives me a route to escape through. Um, right, I'm going to say let's do this. Right, I need to get a, uh, a thing other than Humiliate Rival. That's true. I need to get a claim. In that case, let's go all the way. So, how much does it cost to fabricate again? I'm not used to being so aggressive. 30. Right. All right. We'll get there. Oh, it was so exciting. I was like, I'm going to war. I'm going to war. I'm not going to war. Not yet. And the Danes have started training. Which is something I would love to be doing, but I also really want to be making more money. I'd like to grow my 
combat coffers a little bit further before we jump into a conflict. What terrain is this? This is wood, so it would have been a minus one. We don't have a river crossing, but it would be seven against two. They would reinforce, but they would arrive late, so we would get the initial hits. Plus, we have tech four against their tech three. Unfortunately, that is the advantage we're losing. I wasn't really expecting that we'd be so far ahead of them. Although, considering uh, that we have a fairly decent ruler and also um, have had an advisor this entire time. A careless turn of phrase by Syndic Fabian Schmidt has greatly offended the Holstinian Count. Mollifying him will not be easy without losing face. So, Lubeck gains diplomatic insult on Holstein. Wait, shouldn't they get one on us? Because we offended them. So the diplomatic insult is against us. Or we can try to ease the tension, which gets relation bonus Mecklenburg, Holstein, Saxe-Lauenburg. Saxe-Lauenburg we don't care about, Mecklenburg and Holstein, definitely nice. That's a new place, Neubrandenburg. Pretty sure that didn't used to exist. Alright, we're at 9 spy network. We need another 21. We're getting there slowly. Slowly but surely. Alright, let's go back to speed 4. T, good. Thicker than water. Too many powerful people in Lubeck. Contacts or wealth determine status, but nobles still value blood ties highly. Even though the nobles are far from the most powerful faction in our republic at this time, they still use the same methods to ensure loyalty. A recent request for the hand of your daughter from a well-known aristocratic family is clearly such an attempt. You know that this will force you to steer politics closer to their line and weaken the republic, but refusing will make it even more difficult to compel them to support your planned military reforms. Uh, so we can lose some Republican tradition, the aristocrats gain in influence. And actually, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because the aristos, if I remember correctly, give morale. They do. Um. Fine. This once. So the aristos are in charge. We gain morale from that. Plus we gain morale from Hagen Stees. So we are really ready for a war. I want to fight something! So close. So close and yet so far. The tea tastes extra good at the moment. Because I'm playing E4 again. So the English territories are mostly occupied. Labour is not yet. Oh, looks like Burgundy is at war. Against Liège, Austria, Clèves, Salzburg, Trent and Trier. And that is a war against Burgundy. Ooh, what triggered that? So that's the English-French Unification War. So if England wins this, they get France as a PU. So let's hope they don't. Then the Burgundy ones. This is the Burgundian conquest of Liège. This is a fight that Burgundy started and they called in Austria as the Empire. Because Burgundy is not in the Empire. So they will call in the Emperor. Unlike my scuffle, which won't. I hope. Unholt has left the trade league led by Lubeck. They left because they wanted to. Unholt? Why? You like us? Ally to Lubeckian rival Lundberg. That would be why. And we can tech up again. So we could get Diplo. Um, yeah, I'd like to be ahead of time because it will generate more innovativeness. And also gives us the 20% trade efficiency, which is pretty nice. 
And we'll go ahead of time and admin as well. So we are... Oh no, I'm not going to core. We're going to vassalize. Because if we core the territory, then we'll get the demand unlawful from Austria. And that I would definitely like to avoid. Alright, so we're probably about six months away from the next war. Ooh, I finished something. And the sound hole! Aha! Because Denmark likes us, I think. Yeah, Denmark's opinion of us is at least 150, thanks to the in, uh, relations boost there. Completely unintended, but I'll take it. So this will increase trade power by plus 15 until the end of the game? What? And local trade power in Lübeck. Hans is coming back, baby. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so next up we'll be securing the Baltic trade, which we need to have 30% or more trade power in the Northern Baltic Sea. Wait, the Northern Baltic? Is there a Southern Baltic? No. <laughs> Don't confuse me like that, please. So yeah, we need to get to 30%. That's just going to be a matter of time. Just need the opportunity to build up our nation, build up the... Uh, Ultra Pot, maybe to a level 3, although that would cost a grand. To build a marketplace, marketplace would be a big boost. And we are already boosting trade here now. Here's another question. Can I change my edicts yet? Yes, I can. So if we wanted to dev up, then we would have that possibility now. The Renaissance. Since the 14th century, the wealthy and the powerful of the Italian city-states have been patronizing artists and scholars willing to explore the old Roman and Greek societies of their forefathers. As a cultural movement, the Renaissance already encompasses most of the region and has had a profound impact on literature, art, philosophy and music. Humanist scholars are also analyzing the society in which they live, comparing it to the ideals of the classical philosophers. At the turn of 1452, Renaissance humanism has grown into a more mature movement, ready to permeate all aspects of society. A new ideal for rulers as well as those who are ruled is spreading as quickly as the early printers can distribute copies of these new ideas. A true Renaissance humanist is an expert on everything from politics and philosophy to art, textual analysis, music and architecture. The Renaissance is now ready to reshape the world to better fit its classical ideals. Alright, so we need to start working on actually embracing the Renaissance. And it is growing in our territory. Why is it growing and can I encourage it? It is growing because we are a European ten development province. So yes, we could encourage it by not protecting trade and instead getting the institute spread. However, I want a war. <laughs> And we've actually blitzed past the point where I can get one. So let's go ahead and prepare ourselves for this. I am making a ton of cash. Apparently our share of the trade has gone up. Oh, because of the sound hole. Of course. Ha-ha. Oh, we're already at 29%. We're 1% short. So in fact, yeah, if I take Lauenberg, then probably the trade I get from my vassal is going to be enough. Wild rumours are circulating about our nobility plotting with foreign powers again. Guys, subtlety, learn it. Uh, this time, it would be really expensive to improve. I'm going to have to go down to 75 Republican tradition, which I'm not appreciating, but I cannot afford to go negative stability. Seize them in their wealth. Damn it. Mission fulfilled. Global dominance. Lubeck is the strongest trade power in Lubeck. Gain 15% more trade efficiency for 20 years. Gain in... Oh, gain prestige. Hell yeah, prestige equals morale. Equals a better time against these guys. Now, have they got to Miltech 4 yet? No. Oh, man. Oh, man. Come on. We still don't have any forts either. <laughs> And I could actually afford a proper general rather than using my ruler. So if we did do that, we could get a general with 2 to 8 pips. So currently we have a general with a 5. So 5 seems to be the average. Detach the leader or dismiss them. I don't want to do either of those things. I want to rename them. I want my rename button, please. Pretty please with a cherry on top. 
There's just a little icon like right there in the corner or something. Just let me rename. Monferrat has joined Genoa. Um, I think that we are now ready to declare war. So, Saxe Lauenburg, still allied with the same people. I'm going to save the game just in case. And we're going to go Saxe Lauenburg, declare war. No, we're not. We're going to go fabricate claim on Lauenburg. Okay. Now we're going to declare war. No, we're not. We're going to wait a day. Now we're going to declare war. We'll get there eventually. Take Lauenburg. Not calling in allies. They'll call in... The oh, no. They're allied to Mecklenburg now. Uh, that's another 3,000 men thrown into the... mix. <laughs> I might be ter ter tearing off way more than I can actually chew here. But we have a decent amount of money. We have a decent amount of manpower. If I can beat these guys up separately, we can win this. And I have a fort. They don't. Uh, it's going to be a long time before I can call anybody else in. We also have cavalry. They don't. They have 11,000 men. And a massive manpower pool compared to us. Oh, they're guaranteed by Mech. Hang on. If they're guaranteed. It does say that there. Damn you. Now, here's the thing. Are they guaranteed to join? Mm, yeah, pretty much. I mean, they'd be the most likely to say no. But they would lose, I think, a lot of prestige if they said no. The problem is, if they ever manage to band all of their troops together, they have no forts, though. None. And that's a problem for them. We're doing it. We're going to war! And they all honoured. And that's where we're going to end this episode. So thank you everyone for watching. I do hope you're enjoying this. If you are, be sure to hit that follow button to get notifications when I'm live again in the future. If you're really enjoying this, then do consider subscribing. It helps the channel out, lets me do more of this kind of content. If you want to support the channel in other ways, check out the Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com slash mordredviking. I do have a Twitch channel, which you can find at twitch.tv slash mordredviking. That is where I will be playing this live tonight, Saturday the 6th of June at 6pm BST with a bunch of other creators, and you definitely should come and uh, check that out. So I do hope to see you there for that. Then I also have a Discord, which is where the community hangs out. They're a very cool bunch, and it's always a real pleasure to see some new faces there. So please do come join us, say hello. You'll be more than welcome. Uh, all of those details, by the way, in the description. That's it from me. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I will catch you in the next one for the conclusion of this war. Till then, goodbye.